Hello and welcome to Diabetech. I'm Justin and on this channel I talk all things diabetes and diabetes tech. Today we're talking about the Dexcom G7 app. I'm taking you on a complete walkthrough of all the new features and abilities. I reviewed the G7. I used it over a month so far and I put all of my thoughts and experience with it so far on that video, I'll throw it up in the corner as well as down in the description. But today we're going through the entire app. If you enjoy today's video and want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell for alerts if you want to get alerted when they drop every Friday. And also to help other people find this video, give it a like. All right, let's hop in. When you first open up the Dexcom app, you see that number right on top along with an arrow showing you the direction your blood sugars are going and then you've got a graph on the front as well. This you can see different amount of hours all the way from 3 to 24 hours. Best part is you can use your finger and scroll along it and see the numbers input by input. If you want to see this in a bigger graph, just flip the phone to the side and you can see the graph even longer and you can also put your finger over that as well. There's also a new button in the top left. When you tap that, it'll take you back to the main app. Scroll down a bit and you have Clarity right in this app. No longer do you need to leave to go to the Clarity app to get this information. There are some other things that you can only get over there, but now you can see all this. You've got your average glucose over anywhere from three days to 90 days. Then you can see your GMI, which is the glucose management indicator. This is very similar to an A1C. It is using all of this information it has about your blood sugars and creating a success percentage, basically. There is some variation. This is 6.4, and I know that my A1C was definitely lower than that, but still a great indicator, and in some ways is reducing the importance of an A1C post-diagnosis, which is debatable. Let me know what you think of that down in the comments. And then, of course, you see your time and range. It's nice to have this right on this app. If you scroll up to the top, you can see there's a dot, dot, dot in the graph. So when you tap into that, this is where you can turn um, on and off high alerts and low alerts just with those tabs. You can also adjust the ranges when you'll get notified. So for highs, you can go as low as, I believe, 100, and then as high as 400. I have this set to 190 in case I just go up for a second and go back down. And then... Uh, for low alerts, you can go as low as 60, as high as 150. I have this set personally to 75. And then you can also show quiet modes. So when I tap show quiet modes, there is the vibrate option. When you turn this on, you can set it up to six hours or indefinitely for all of your notifications to be on vibration. There are two alerts that will bypass the vibration after the first vibration alert if you don't acknowledge it, and that's urgent low and sensor failure. Also on the home screen is that plus button in the top right. This is where you can add in different events. So first you've got blood glucose. Here you can either just put in a glucose amount or you can put in an actual calibration. So if my blood sugar was actually 125, I type that in, save, and then the sensor will recalibrate to that number. Then you can put in insulin, you can put in fast acting, long acting, and then how many units you used. Then you can also put in a meal putting in the amount of carbs. Unfortunately, you can't put in like the type of food or with like an emoji, that would be pretty cool. The glycemic index of foods is a super important thing to, to know like how quickly or slowly foods impact your blood sugar levels. And it would be cool in the meal section if you could apply those types of settings as well in here. I'd like to see that in the future. And then in activity, you have the ability to set the duration of it and also the intensity anywhere from light to heavy. I think it would be cool to be able to put in the type of workout, whether it was cardio or weightlifting, because those can affect your blood sugar in many different ways. And then lastly, there is the note, which addresses a lot of my notes about this section, because you can go in and say, I had pizza, and you could put it was 100 grams of carbs, you know, and you could put that in there, and you will have that note. Now, what's the point of these notes? Well, the first thing is when you flip your phone over, you'll notice on here I have two icons on the bottom. One is a calibration, and it shows you what I calibrated it for and what it was at the time. Pretty accurate. 
And then you've got the activity, a 30 minute activity, which is fake. I did not work out today. <laughs> Those events go to a couple different places. They go to the Clarity app and they also go to the Clarity desktop version on the computer. Let me show you what that looks like now. To get to Dexcom Clarity on a computer, just go on clarity.dexcom.com and you'll have to log in. I'm already logged in. And then what you'll see is when you go to daily, you will see the icons that I was just showing you before on here. So you can see my activity that happened on that. And then the day prior, you can see my calibration. You can see alerts. Dexcom Clarity on a web browser gives you so much more. You can look at trends and patterns and even overlay weeks together, which is pretty awesome. You can see what weeks of vacations versus just normal weeks kind of looked like. Back to the app. The next tab is the history tab. This is also where all of the events that you log go and you can reference them and you can also add different events from this section as well. The next tab is connections. Here you can see a few different things. You can see your sensor, which you can see I have six days left. It expires at 9.37 p.m. on April 9th, but there is a 12 hour grace period on the G7, so it won't actually expire until the following day at 9.30 a.m. I talk all about that and more in my G7 review, so check that out if you haven't. Then there are two buttons, which I got confused by, but now I understand it. So replace sensor is to just take off your sensor and then put on a new one. Stop sensor session is to take off one and just stop it and you're not putting on another one yet. Go back to connections and there's share. Here's where you can share your blood sugar levels with other people. I'm sharing that with my friends David and Toby, with myself for some testing and SugarMate. SugarMate's this awesome diabetes dashboard uh, way of tracking your levels. You can have SugarMate send your blood sugar to calendar alerts. I'm going to be talking about that a lot either on this channel or on my socials, so make sure you follow me there. And lastly, there is the profile tab. Let me show you a few different things. There's Siri shortcuts. Here's where you can set a voice command to get your blood sugar readings, whether it's on your iPhone, your AirPods, your Apple Watch, or a HomePod. Yes, all iPhone things because I'm using an iPhone and it's Siri. I have it set to what are my sugar levels, so I can ask it this, what are my sugar levels? And check that out. My sugar levels came right on the screen. It will also answer verbally if you're using AirPods or your watch or a HomePod. That way you can just hear what your blood sugar is, how steady it is and what number it is. Next up, you've got the glucose tab. This is where you can edit the height of your chart, whether it's three or 400, I like it 300. And then you can set your uh, target range to either go on or off. It's that gray area. I like to keep it on. And then I like this ability. You can turn off the clarity report on the home screen. So when I go back to the home screen, you can no longer scroll down to clarity. This is good if you're someone who tends to obsess over your blood sugar readings. You don't want to see that. You can turn that off and then you won't have access to it or as easy access to it. And I'm going to turn it back on. And lastly, one of the biggest updates to this app are the alerts. I already got into quiet modes, which is the vibration mode that will turn your alerts to vibration, but you can also go in to high alert and delay the first alert. You can toggle that on or off. I have it set to 15 minutes. It does go all the way up to four hours like that. Um, so this is basically, you won't get that first high alert until it hits this time. So if my blood sugars go up to 200 and then back down into my range in just 14 minutes, I'll have never been alerted, which is nice. I get to live in that moment and not be taken out of it unless it becomes an issue. You can also snooze alerts, which means after that first alert, you won't get another alert until it hits a certain time period. I have that set to one hour. So that means after 15 minutes, if I'm still high, I'll get an alert and then I won't get another alert for an hour. What you can also do here is change the sound for the G7 high alarm. This is new. You could always change the alarm sounds, but not like this. So watch this. When I tap in, this is medium, soft, and intense. I'm going to keep it on medium. You can do the same thing with low alerts. You can change those between soft, medium, and high. But what if you wanted to have different intensities at different times? 
you can do that by adding a second alert profile. Just tap in there, I'm gonna call this settings two. Save that. And here, I can go in and change this, like my alert settings, whatever, change those, and I can schedule them at the bottom. So I'm gonna turn the scheduling on. I want it to be every day of the week when I'm sleeping. So I'm gonna make it 11 p.m. until 8 a.m. There we go. And now this schedule will be set only for when I'm sleeping. It's that easy. That's all I've got on the G7 app. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. Either I or someone else can help you answer them. And if you wanna learn more about the G7, check out my one month review. And I also interviewed the Dexcom CEO if you wanna check that out. I've got videos coming out every Friday, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell if you want alerts. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. I'm Justin, and I'll tech you later.